One of the classic problems in software is offshore development. Obviously, US-based resources are very expensive. There's a talent shortage. Um, it's a struggle for companies to be successful with US software because um, it's so expensive to hire people. So then a lot of people go to offshore and then you have these bad experiences. Maybe the talent isn't as good or communication's bad, things just don't go well. And, and then, you know, you, you, there's the stigma of offshore development being kind of low quality. Um, and I think offshore development can be very successful. I think the quality can be really high. And we worked with a lot of people outside of the US um, that I would argue are uh, just as good or, or better than a lot of people that we've worked in the US. Um, so I think there's great talent everywhere. There's good talent in the US and there's bad talent in the US and kind of really applies to every other country in the world. Um, and I think the way that I would make offshore uh, development successful and the way we make it successful is number one, highly vetting the resources. The same thing applies to the you know, US. Like we go through a lot of rounds of, of interviews to hire someone here or overseas, wherever they may be. So you have to rigorous, rigorously um, make sure that those people are good. And I think a lot of people just say, hey, we're gonna hire this company and they have a bunch of offshore resources. We actually make sure that the individual people that we're working with um, are highly vetted um, and uh, they're, they're going to be very successful. And those people are the direct people that we're working with. Uh, so there's one 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 to one communication uh, with, with our company. Um, and then the other is um, having uh, a good uh, time zone planning strategy. Um, South America has been very successful uh, for us uh, and that's because there's not really an issue with time zone. Um, but if you are, uh, we haven't um, really done much with very far away time zones, but if you are to work with companies that are, uh, or individuals that are you know, really far away, then you have to have a strategy and plan around time zones because um, it's not realistic to expect people to work uh, at midnight or crazy hours. So you probably have some small overlaps, so you have to be really succinct with those times and make sure that you're really organized. And that kind of ties into the next thing, which is having good project management and requirements gathering. And that may require your team to also plan around those time zone um, uh, changes. Um, the other is I think, I, you know, I think having a mix of US and offshore it can be really successful because um, you know, you get some of that um, you know, great communication from US people that are here. Um, they might be more close to your organization uh, and they can communicate with some of the offshore development uh, resources. Um, so I think there's a lot of little strategies that go into it and it's not any one thing. Um, so you really have to have uh, a mix of a lot of things that, that goes into making it successful. But, but just blindly hiring you know, a bunch of offshore resources or shipping a bunch of work off overseas, it's probably gonna fail, um, but it doesn't mean that offshore development can't be successful.